Whoso pulleth out this sword of this stone and anvil is rightwise king born of all England. Then the people marveled and took it to the archbishop. I command, said the archbishop, that ye keep you within your church and pray unto God still, that no man touch the sword till the high mass be all done. So when all masses were done, all the lords went to behold the stone and the sword. And when they saw the scripture, some assayed, such as would have been king, but none might stir the sword nor move it. He is not here, said the archbishop, that shall achieve the sword, but doubt not God will make him known. Sir Thomas Mallory, King Arthur and his knights. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Back when I covered Anime 5e, I brought Good Brother Shades on to talk about examples of anime fantasy, since that was a pillar for its design compared to its predecessor. One of the sticking points in that was the mixing of genres being more the norm than the exception. I would contrast this with the mindset of certain grognards who seem to have a segregated attitude of genres and subgenres, but I digress. I bring this up because while anime is filled with this sort of genre cross-referencing, it's still somewhat rare for anime-inspired TTRPGs to perform this same thing outside of a few instances. Most of the time it's clearly emulating one genre or show, but rarely is the idea of blending explored. This time around, we're looking at something that does. We'll be delving into Knights of the Round Academy, here after referred to as Kotra because I am not paid by the syllable. The astute among you may have noticed- wait, Knights of the Round, didn't you talk about that last time? Yeah, I kinda did. Well, it's time to fire off Chekhov's gun this time, after putting it on the table. For a quick refresher, Kotra is intended to be a blending of elements between real robot-style mecha, shonen, and school drama anime subgenres. Created by Claudio Serena and published by Fumble GDR, this uses a modified version of the Hexis system to the point that one cannot call it a campaign setting for not the end. Once again, in the interest of disclosure, I will note that I've interviewed Claudio on my show, and I did back the game on Kickstarter. As always, that will not play a factor into my assessment. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Kultra runs at 353 pages, but much like Not the End, its page size is deceptive to its density. Last time I used the analogy of an art book or a coffee table book. While there's a lot of art in this, Kultra is formatted like a book meant for an e-reader, with how the text is presented. As an aside, this is one of the rare books in my library with an EPUB version, as well as the usual PDF. Individual pages focus on getting the information one needs and not drowning in unnecessary details. While the lack of an index is a disappointment, the use of hyperlinks and bookmarks does even that out a bit. Also, the art here is really good at conveying the tone it wants to go for. It's not doing the film-style concept art that we saw with Not the End, but instead something that you would see in a guidebook for any given anime, especially one from the 90s. Character creation is similar but different to the method seen in the Hexis system in Not the End. We'll be exploring this once again with Aldine Zamek Robinson. Now first is lineage, the equivalent to race. In our case, we're going with Avalon. Now choice of heritage grants a benefit known as a legacy, which for us will go with ancient blood, making it harder for her to be forcefully exited out of a scene. Second is your core, the element the student is linked to that lets them pilot their knight. This can be used for some narrative effects where that element is manipulated by them in minor ways. That said, the element is not meant to be limited to the basic four that everyone would think of. In our case, we'll go with ice. Third is soul, which is described as the most defining aspect of the character. In our case, we'll go with dragon's child. Fourth is traits, which is similar to the trait system in Hexis. We have four of them to choose for, and in our case, we'll go with charismatic, inquisitive, tactician, and swordsmanship. Fifth is your flaw, which can restore limited points, I'll get to that later, at the cost of making a test more challenging. In our case, we'll go with the fact that Aldine can be blunt in conversations. Sixth is your nemesis, some sort of scarring person, place, or thing that one has to get over. In Aldine's case, we'll go with disrespect, as she is someone who demands respect for her abilities and doesn't take perceived slights well. Seventh is your first job, essentially an archetype or a class. In our case, we'll go with champion, which grants us access to the job's basic, advanced, knight, and overdrive technique. It should be noted, however, that we cannot use the advanced technique just yet. Eighth is limit and overdrive. This is essentially your extra effort system, used to perform extra normal feats. The former is limit and always starts at eight, gaining three points of overdrive through your memories, the first of which being your name. Ninth is the character's knight and frame essentially the name of their mecha and the type of mech that it is. These are essentially traits, and we'll go with the name Fenris and Lancer, respectively. Lastly, your kin spirit, 
essentially a character you have some potential of a bond with. This is represented with affinity points, which start at 0 and cap at 10. We'll jot down Aldine's confidant Jean for this, with a starting affinity of 0. Obviously, the character creation process is a bit more involved than not the ends, but I do like the mix of tags with things that have stated benefits. However, I do think that some of the tags don't have the same level of good idea, bad idea detail that I praised with Not The End's discussion on traits. There's certainly no shortage of suggestions, but I feel that at the very least the pregens should have been in the book in the same manner as the example characters throughout Not The End. It's a good system, but it's just shy of greatness in how it's presented. Now, unlike Not The End, Knights of the Round does not use a bag draw. Instead, it uses a dice pool of multiple sizes. Regardless, die rolls are still tests, and there is no distinction between combat and non-combat tests. The first step is building the student's pool. This is a collection of DAs that are generated by the traits used on a test, to a maximum of six. It's also worth noting that using your knight as a trait or its ability generates d12s. After that, the GM converts a number of them into sixes to build the hardship pool. Additionally, threat traits can be used to convert a d6 further into a d4. Threat traits are essentially traits, but for the GM. These die are then rolled, and only the highest student and hardship die are kept. If the result of these are 6 or higher, it is a complete success. If either are 5 or less, there are consequences with the test. And if both are 5 or less, then it's a failure. That said, rolling a 1 is considered a disaster, while rolling a 12 is considered a triumph. This is as good a time as any to talk about Limit, the extra effort mechanic of Kotra. As mentioned previously, this caps at 8, and each memory grants 3 points of overdrive. Limit is typically utilized in one of two ways, adding d12s to a die roll, or activating techniques. While those are the two most common, there are other uses of Limit that include utilizing your core in an appropriate way, or turning consequences into successes. That said, if you run out of Limit and still want to spend, you can start dipping into your overdrive pool. The catch is, is that once you're that far, successes and consequences are treated as triumphs and disasters, respectively. A lot of the DNA from Not the End is still present here, in particular the mantra of taking risks. The fact that 6 is the magic number means that playing conservatively with tasks isn't always advisable. There are a few mechanics like knights and equipment that I had to dig around for, unfortunately, and I feel like a cheat sheet is needed. And the reference on the character sheet isn't exactly cutting it. Now when I covered Not the End, I said there was a lot I liked about it. But the one thing that would make or break it was the use of drawing tokens from a bag as this randomizer mechanic. Now while I like it, and it certainly fit the theme, I'd have a hard time visualing it for virtual tabletop. Kultra, while stumbling in some very small parts, I have an easier time given the rule of six die pool system that it utilizes. While those who want some sort of advancement goal like what's seen in a lot of traditional and more ubiquitous games might not be completely satisfied with the approach here, it accomplishes what it's shooting for within its themes. Additionally, I could easily see the system hacked into other setups, especially since I recall a shonen hack being pitched as a Kickstarter stretch goal, which, at the time of this recording, that is being worked on. If it wasn't obvious by now, Knights of the Round Academy gets a stamp of strongly recommended. The amount of potential within this setup is just as vast as it was in Not the End, and I'd probably dip into that if I was ever going to get around to writing Agito Arcanum, the subject matter of the Geek Watch episode Adventurers Academy, into a full-on book. I'd likely use this system as my foundation, assuming that's something that's doable. A part of the reason I covered both Not the End and Kotra, as well as doing the Valley of the Judged episode on the Cowboy Bebop playtest is because I wanted to demonstrate that Fumble GDR has a very strong understanding of genre emulation with their work. And that's not even getting into the stuff that hasn't been translated yet, like Gatai, their tribute to 70s era mecha, or Login, their tribute to games like Dot Hack. There might be a bit of bias, but I really do look forward to seeing how this team ends up developing with this particular embracing of anime genres. But that is a story for down the road. Until then, Stay frosty.